And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, in exactly four weeks, we shall celebrate the Assumption of Our Lady. And this time can be a very good opportunity for us to, to grow in devotion to Our Lady. Through Mary, we go to Jesus in the best possible way. And also this coming week, in the, the 22nd, we celebrate the feast day of St. Mary Magdalene, a woman who by God's grace became a great saint. There are many legends about her and even popular fiction has invented all kinds of theories about her. And um, the one thing we know for sure is that she, she witnessed the risen Lord as first. She is the first person who brought to the disciples the, the news that Jesus lived. Here you see two women who are very different and each one of them, in their own way, is a model for us to, to follow Christ. Today in, in the Apostle, we just read how Jesus says to his disciples, come with me to a lonely place and rest a while. And the Gospel tells us, because of the numerous people going and coming, they did not even have time to eat. You see that the Lord uh, calls his disciples. He, he dedicates attention to them, not only to the, the spiritual needs, also to the physical needs, to, to rest, to eat. They left in the boat to a lonely place to be alone. But you know what happens. That uh, in, Instead of having more time to dedicate to his disciples, they arrive at the place. If you've been in, in the Lake of Gennesaret, you see that it's quite large, but on a, let's say on a clear day, you see the other side of the, of the big lake. And these people saw where Jesus was going, and they had the time to, to walk around and get to the place where Jesus went. What, is, uh, what I see here is that uh, not only then, but people look for Jesus because they want to hear about God. And also in our times, people look for God and they need to find the right persons. The Virgin Mary and Mary Magdalene were first of all disciples. And even in our time, they, in their own right, they, they are apostles of Jesus Christ. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great multitude and feel, felt pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach at length. Jesus is the good shepherd. And he spoke about it other times. He says that the good shepherd gives his life for, for his sheep. And uh, when Jesus said this, the apostles didn't know that it would really happen. The apostles also gave their lives later for our Lord. Unfortunately, there is always a small number of people who is not faithful to the Lord. And even in our time, people, even, let's say, clerics who do things 
of which you could be ashamed of even naming here. But thank God there is always a, a great number of good shepherds in the world. But good shepherds, I think, brothers and sisters, are not only the persons in charge in the church. Good shepherds are also to be found in families, parents for children, for instance, and even you yourself with relatives, friends, you should be a good shepherd of other persons to, to help them to find the way to the Lord. That's what a good shepherd is. Someone who helps us to, to have Jesus in, in vision, in our mind. One of the recent persons of who you can say was really a, a good shepherd for the whole church was Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul. And uh, just before the year 2000, he wrote uh, an apostolic letter called Novo Millennio in Eonte, now that the third millennium is starting. And he says a few things that he says can help to, to bring the church further away and closer to people in this 21st century. You could say in the third millennium, not only in this century. And he says a few things that I would like to comment on to see what are the, the desires of the Good Shepherd for us in this time and, and maybe for the long term. The first thing is always start with Christ. Know this, I am with you all the days until the consummation of the world. And we say to the Lord, Lord, what shall we do? We shall go to you because you have source of life. How can we put Jesus at the center of our life? First of all, is what I would call the, a spiritual plan of life. Pray 10 or 15 minutes every day. Read the Gospels. Go to Mass on Sundays, and if you can, also during the week, someday. Visit Jesus. Learn to pray the Rosary. Say at least uh, a few decades of the Rosary. Do a short examination of conscience at the end of the day. Pray three Hail Marys before you go to bed. These are things that can help us every day to, to be close to the Lord. The Pope said, um, in this way, we, sh we can seek holiness. At times, uh, I think that when we hear this word holiness, we, we think of these statues in the churches, a bit distant, but made of stone or of clay or of wood. But uh, a holy person is someone who really knows deep. Do you know a person who doesn't want to be happy? Being happy is being holy. And uh, let's ask our Lord that he helps us to, to search for this. We need to learn the art of prayer, says the Pope. The art of prayer means that it's not something you just learn by heart, it's something that you need to live with your life. Each one of us has to learn the own way to, to live his own way of praying. The Holy Eucharist, the Holy Mass, times of adoration. In our chapel, we have the, the opportunity to do that every Tuesday and uh, Thursday and Friday, because the whole day is possible to be adoration, and eventually the, the whole night of the Thursday and the whole night of the Friday. Repentance for our sins, like Saint Mary Magdalene, Confesses our sins with contrition changes our lives. Devils are cast out when we do a good confession. Our worries disappear in the greatness of God's mercy. Let's try to see how could we do a better confession the next time we go. We need your grace, O oh Lord. Help us not to forget that what you said is true. I am the vine, you are the branches. You remain in me and I in you. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Lord, uh, with you we can do quite a lot because you do it through us. John Paul II also said, let us listen to the Holy Scriptures, also reading and meditating on our own. We need to tell people, once we've meditated, it's easier to tell people about Jesus. People don't know Jesus, 
And those who think they know him probably at times is just a, a caricature of the person of Jesus. Let us proclaim the, teaches, the teachings of Jesus one by one, face to face. Another important point, how charitable I am, am I with others? By this, everyone will be able to see that you are my disciples, says the Lord. If you keep love among yourselves, the people who, who know us, do they see in us real love, real care, real concern about the, the things of others? Is the church a true family of brothers and sisters who love one another? One of the things that make the, the you could say, the saddest I can think of is in some families where brothers and sisters don't speak with each other because they, are, they have had a problem and they can't speak with them. Or maybe it's a good opportunity today to think, is there any a person whom I have to, to forgive for whom I can pray and, and start anew in that relationship. Let us also pray for Christians in the whole world, unity with the whole world, especially for Christians persecuted in, in different Asian and African countries, for instance. And maybe also closer by in a different way, but also things are not made always so easy for those who practice their faith. Lord, we want to pray for the whole church, for the Pope, for the bishops. And uh, finally, let's just think for ourselves. Hmm? Lord, uh, is it not true that each one of us has a lot of work to do in ourselves to become a little bit better, to be a better Christian? St. Mary Magdalene, we ask you to, to help us. Hmm? Help us remind what you said to your disciples, that Jesus is truly alive. He is with you. And he will be with you forever. Mother Mary, help us in this moment of our history because we need you more than ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.